treat for uh, this one. What's a treat? You know, every vlog, the missus always has hair straighteners, and when they pack up, especially if you're an engineer or electronic engineer or anything to do with electronics or electrical systems, can you have a look at them, please? Yeah. I hate these things. I really do. It, just the, when, who, people design them, okay? Uh, it's hot, um, you know, and then you've got features like, oh, it turns on. Well, how long does it take you to straighten your hair? Two minutes? Five minutes? Ten minutes? And why does it need to stay on indefinitely? You plunk it down on the surface, it catches fire. That's another thing when you plunk it down on the surfaces. Who the hell thought, I know, let's make it straight and put the heating elements as close to the edge as possible. Yeah, good idea, because when then you put them down on a surface, it's going to catch fire, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Hair straighteners. The most badly designed consumer product, in my opinion, on the market. And they're all the same, and they all break after a year. You know? There are probably people out there who have designed these who are watching this and going, oh shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, give me a break. Seriously. If I can think it, why can't you? Anyway, rant over. Let's fix them. So the first thing to check with any appliance is the fuse. It's the easiest and cheapest thing to check. So we have a 5 amp one. I like to stick it on the continuity tester and see what happens. Yep, and as you can see, continuity. So the fuse is blown, which means something a bit further down the line. So the next thing to do is try and replicate the fault or recreate the fault. As you can see there's an on and off button, there seems to be two indicators like here and this obviously sets the heat setting. Now then, let's turn the power on. Okie dokie. Yes I know I'm not using an isolated supply but for this I don't need to. Right so, let's fire up. Oh, green light. Looks like we're working. Oh, what's, what else is there? Hmm. Oh, ooh, ooh, hello. Hmm. Okay. Working again. Oh. Oh, I know. Yeah. These horrible bloody rotational connectors. Which, are, okay, are a good idea, but they're a point of wear. And you know, especially when you're tugging on them, you're trying to undo the kinked bloody flex, which it's already doing now, it's all kinked up. Um, you know, eventually it gets abused. So I think this one's suffering from uh, one contact, or duff contacts from being abused too much. Because uh, it's powering on, and I can feel that getting warm. But as soon as you move it about, yeah. <laughs> he won't do it now. There we go. Yep, dead. Right, so let's crack her open. Something I also like to check, get the voltmeter out, and measure between the two live and neutral pins. There's no um, earth pin on this. But yeah, sometimes, in some infinite wisdom, they put the um, they put a cap on the wrong side of the switch, which... Uh, Basically means that when you turn it off, the cap's still live and can discharge, well, rectified mains straight to you. <laughs> but this one's okay. It doesn't seem to have um, doesn't seem to have that issue. Right. So I've managed to pull the thing apart uh, to open it up so there's this pin holding the uh, holding it together and a spring so that you can uh, wash her and a nut. Pretty simple construction. They were behind these very nice and fetching plastic faux gold um, little tabs. Little covers, sorry. I went over there. So getting this back together might be a bit fun because that spring is quite yeah <laughs> But anyway, I've come across the first hurdle, which are these horrible, bloody, um, uh, I call them uh, broken slot heads. So in the middle there's like a lump, but fortunately I have the relevant tool for the relevant job. 
so we can continue. Right, we're in there like swimwear. Hey, <laughs> right. This is that rotational barrel jack I was, uh, I was on about. So it looks like there's a live and neutral pin and it couples onto this um, circuit board here where there's these clips that obviously grip around that conductor there and there'll be a centre terminal that also grips around that. Uh, yeah, in there there's a little grip there. So this will be the point of where I think um, I don't know whether to hook this straight up and see if it's further down the line, but I'll, I'll have an inspect of all the wiring and uh, see if there's any dodgy solder joints or anything, which I fully, which I wouldn't half expect to find in something like this. Actually, look at it now, it's not too bad. Cut any corners. I mean, credit where credit's due, they, they know what they're doing. What the hell is that? It's got a very sharp point on there. Ooh. What the heck is that? So as you can see in there, there's a bit of schmutz, uh, a bit of pla, pla, plab, <laughs> muck, whatever you want to call it. Um, and on the other side, yeah, it looks clean. So it looks like it's been rubbing against this contact more than this contact in its life. Uh, kind of half expected that. Anyway, I've just pinched them together to see if that makes any difference. What's going out of focus? And there's also, if you can see on that white wire, there's a bit of pitting in the insulator. Mm. So, there's probably, I don't know if that's melted or actually been chafed. Either way, it's not good because eventually there'll come a point where that thing just goes through the insulator. And it's 240 volts on here. So you wear an insulator, you won't even need to chew it all the way through and it'll just short out. It'd definitely fail an insulation test, that's for sure. If it carried on like that. Anyway, and um, coming down here, I found this device. What the hell is it? It's pretty. It looks like, but I don't know if you can see that spike in there. It looks like at the end of a pencil, but a very sharpened pencil. But it's it's very sharp. I have no idea what that is. If anyone knows what that is, you know, comment below. Um, I'd like to know. It looks pretty lethal. It looks like if there was a failure, that thing would just go bang and shoot out and pierce something. But what for? Anyway, moving on. Job at hand. Let's get that fixed. So I've cleaned that contact up a wee bit. It's looking a bit cleaner now. And I'm just pinching it together by hand. And I've also pinched the uh, contacts up on the back. Shut up. <laughs> the contacts up on the back of that and I'm also going to space these two wires apart um, by basically using this um, uh, screw hole mounting hole here just to, just to naturally space them apart but other than that it all looks good um, it's a good job actually I did catch that because I definitely would think if that wire had worn through then this would have definitely been an insulation fail and um, well, it should blow on the fuse but still, it would have gone with a heck of a crack if it actually managed to just finally worm its way through to the other side. Right, let's put this thing back together and give it a whirl. So this is a good way. So basically, um, you push this metal clip over and oh, keeps both sides together. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good whilst you screw it in place. It's not all the way out though, so best nudge it a bit. Oh, you sneaky bugger, you have to pull it until that hook clips into that slot there. Mm. Right, more force is required. Whee! I really did not want to go together. I ended up having to hold it there whilst I got uh, medieval on it with the long nose pliers. Whew, right, thank goodness for screws. Huh? That's what's coming up next. Let's screw it all together. Um, something to note if uh, you're attempting this. Um, the long black screws go in here and here. The shorter ones go here and here. Just so you know. Right, so, pull all back together. I've not put the caps on the uh, covers yet, but it still functions mechanically as normally anyway. Right, here goes. Ready? Round the hole. Well, that's a good start. Right, 
Okay, let's power on. That's also good. Oh dear. That's not good. Now, it doesn't like it when it's in that position for some strange reason. Let's try that again. So it works. Working, work, not working. Hmm. Okay. So what about the other way around? Working, 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 working. Still working. Not working. Right. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, that seems to be the <laughs> most used position, as you can imagine. With it trailing off down like that. Yeah. I could tell her, just don't use them upside down. <laughs> oh, there we go, we've got a bit of a dodgy situation there. Right. Okay. Well, I guess it's back to the drawing board. Well, you know what? It's getting late. I think I'll leave this for now. Um, maybe pick it up another time. Hmm. Is are they worth fixing? I don't know. This is the case in point for somebody who's uh, repairing stuff. Is it worth fixing? How much did it cost of your time? Well, so far it's taken me probably about half an hour to just do that. You know, you've got to put a price on your time. Uh, going any further into this, I don't know. So, what are you do in an event like this where it's an intermittent fault, and you know what you can do to fix it, is you go have a word with the boss. <laughs> yep, the boss. And um, I basically put it to uh, my other half and said, um, look, it works, but it works intermittently. Uh, I know why it doesn't work. I know I can, if I can hack it, I can get it to work. However, it won't work. It won't rotate roundy roundy like this see this And she said that's fine. So what I intend to do, take this apart again, get those contacts, and just solder them straight to that board. And, you know, it'll bend, it'll twist. Maybe put some glue in there just to hold that in place or something. You know, and it'll be fine. I hope. I'll give it a quick pat test as well, just to make sure it's actually not going to hurt anyone. But yeah. Right, so back in there. Now then, what I plan to do is, this board is now pretty much superfluous. If you suspect something, you can always just remove it from the equation. And then just sort of like bypass this thing. Doesn't look like it's got anything uh, safety related on board of it. Nope. Just two wires soldered to those clips. So, what I'm going to do is just take the red one. Solder it to the centre of this. Take the white one, solder it to the external of this, and then maybe a bit of hot snot, just to keep it a bit uh, separated, and in, on wires in place, just in case the solder fails. Right, solder onto there, hot snot, tie onto there. Job's a teapot. So, better idea, and then hot snot, old-fashioned heat shrink, that should do the job. Well, that's pretty good, it's not going to come off. If I had some adhesive line stuff, I'd use that, but uh, yeah, that's pretty good, that's going to hold on, it's not going to go anywhere. Right, change of plan is what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this thick heat shrink over both wires. 
then solder the red wire to the center pin and heat shrink it over. Then solder the white wire to the outer sleeve and then take this and put them all over both and shrink it over. Now that should create a decent insulation from the uh, case as well. I know it's probably a plastic case, but still I want to minimize the amount of possible contact if that joint fails and goes onto the case. Because I don't know what type of sort of plastic this is. It could be slightly conductive. I don't know. So, belt and braces, do it like that. Well, it's soldered on, but I think this plastic's, uh, plastic insert suffered just a wee bit on the edge where I had the soldering iron. It's sort of like bled out. It's almost like it's like nylon based because it's like it's like um hot glue. Anyway, um, not to worry. It's actually soldered on pretty well. That's good, strong connection. So I'm going to take this sleeve, solder over the whole lot. See, how, uh, sorry, shrink it over the whole lot and see how it looks. So, you know when you think, right, that should have done it, nah. Just plugged it in, still flickering. So, because you can't see any stresses on the cable inside, I think the stresses on the cable in here. I think we've got a fracture in here somewhere. Well, this is the uh, ins and outs of repair. You've done as best you can, but there's no way I'm hacking this off and then stuffing it straight into there because this boot uh masks off a hole bigger than the di diameter of this wire and I, that would i would not be very comfortable having that in my house to be honest so this is the thing so this is the dilemmas of self repair you've got to be happy with it now if that was a fix i would be happy with that it looks like it's still left the factory it's you know pretty good it's, it's well insulated and protected the case isn't damaged you know that'd be fine but because that then we've got a break in the cable in here somewhere because if i jiggle this light goes out then you know hacking that to go straight into there no no and i'm not finding another boot for this thing it's not worth it so, but secondly is how much time you're willing to spend on it and how how far you're willing to use materials, tooling, whatever, to repair it. For a set of hair straighteners like this, nah, it's not worth it. So, I'm afraid, uh, more expense, it's going to be a new set of hair straighteners on the bill. Oh well. If you've enjoyed this, then like, comment and subscribe. In the meantime folks, take it easy.